good. Um, today, family, we're just going to go into with the most high, uh, what's the most high judgment for murder and, and uh, what happens to uh, those that are murdered and the ones that do murder and just what's the, the difference between like shedding innocent blood versus like defending yourself, right? According to the word, because a lot of people, you know, we know that murder is a serious thing, but you see it happening like so much in the world. So you gotta, we're gonna go through these through these scriptures and just get a little deeper as to what happens and um, just the most high judgment on that for the souls of men and women that commit murder. And it's not just, you know, from the shedding blood of just, you know, whether it be a gun or knife, but even, you know, through, if you selling, you know, drugs or taking drugs, you know, just destroying your temple as well. So it's many different ways of murder, according to the word. So if we could, um, let's go to Genesis chapter four. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his, his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to, unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So does anybody know why he slew him? Wasn't it because he was jealous of... Abel. Yeah, but go uh, read that part again. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to verse 2 or verse 3. Just get 3 and 4. Uh -huh. Verse 3. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So the Most High, he liked, he was pleased with the offering that Abel had, but not Cain had. So basically, he brought him um, animal sacrifices, and he was bringing him, just say, plants as a sacrifice. So he was more pleased with what he brought. And so that's where the jealousy came in, because he didn't bring the Most High the offering that he wanted him to bring. Uh, similarities like a lot of people saying they everyone could serve God one way but we all know that you know Christ is our sacrifice to get to the most high to get into his kingdom you can't just get in any way that you want right yeah. let's go back to uh, what's it, verse 11 uh, jumping over to verse 11 and now 
art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand? When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Let's go back to, uh, let's get uh, verse 11 again, and then we're going to get First John chapter 5. Verse 11. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Let's go to First John chapter 5. Everybody here? Con. Con? Uh, get up, verse 8. Let's start. Let's start. Uh, let's start to see. Uh, this is the book of 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yeshia HaMashiach, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. So these three bear witness in earth. Uh huh. The Spirit. The Spirit you're dealing with. Uh huh. The water. Uh huh. And the blood. Mm -hmm. And these three agree in one. So when you go back to uh, Genesis chapter 4, it talked about the blood cried unto me from the ground. So whatever blood is being spread or being shed in this earth, you know, the Most High, he knows where every, wherever this is happening at in the world, right? And we're going to go into that about the judgment of, of, uh, of murder and what the blood also does. Finish, let's finish reading. Kind of back in Genesis. Going back to Genesis, chapter 4, let's pick up at uh, verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond, vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch and builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Now, the Enoch we're going to go into, this is not the same Enoch. This is not the Enoch from uh, from Cain's lineage. It's going to be the Enoch from Seth, uh, another son of uh, Adam and Eve. All right. Now, let's go. Let's uh, jump it over to verse 5. And this is just for your notes because sometimes you get out there, whether you're dealing with an unbeliever or just someone that don't believe his word, you know, they say, well, how did they have kids, right? Jump it over to uh, Genesis 5 and verse 4. Book of Genesis, chapter 5 and verse 4. And the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. So he begot sons and daughters. Let's go to... Let's go to, let's read this in Josephus. Let's get that. We're going to uh, Josephus chapter 2. We're in the book of Josephus chapter 2. Concerning the posterity of Adam and the ten generations from him to the deluge. Adam and Eve had two sons. The elder of them was named Cain, which name, when it is interpreted, signifies a possession. The younger was Abel, which signifies sorrow. They had also daughters, 
Now the two brothers were pleased with different courses of life. For Abel, the younger, was a lover of righteousness and believing that God was, was present at all his actions. He excelled in virtue, and his employment was that of a shepherd. But Cain was not only very wicked in other respects, but was, was wholly intent upon getting, and he first contrived to plow the ground. He killed his brother on the occasion of Salakia. He killed his brother on the occasion following. They had resolved to sacrifice to God. Now Cain brought the fruits of the earth and his husbandry, but Abel brought milk, the first fruit of his flocks. But God was more delighted with the later, with the latter sacrifice, when he was honored with what grew naturally of its own accord. Then he was with what was the invention of a covetous man. So what we bring out earlier about uh, the, the offering that he made to the Most High, that's what he's going into. And gotten by forcing the ground. Thus it was that Cain was very angry that Abel was preferred by God before him. And he killed his brother and hid his dead body, thinking to escape discovery. But God, knowing what had been done, came to Cain and asked him what was become of his brother. Because he had not seen him in many days, whereas he used to, whereas he used to reserve them conversing together at other times. But Cain was in doubt with himself and knew not what to answer, what answer to give God. At first he said that he was himself at a loss about his brother's disappearing. But when he was provoked by God, who pressed him vehemently, vehemently as resolving to know what the matter was, he replied, he was not his brother's guardian or keeper, nor was he an observer of what he did. So he wasn't even repent for what he did. He didn't, he didn't care. He just was keeping it going, right? And that's what some people are dealing with in this world. You know, they just going to keep being murderers no matter the consequences, no matter what they go through. And some, you know, come to repentance, right? Finish reading. But in return, God convicted Cain as having been the murderer of his brother and said, I wonder at you that you know not what has become of a man whom you yourself have destroyed. God therefore did not if inflict the punishment of death upon him on account of his offering sacrifice and thereby making supplication to him not to be extreme and his wrath to him. But he made him accursed and threatened his posterity in the seventh generation. He also cast him together with his wife out of the land and when he was afraid that in wandering about he should fall among wild beasts and by that means perish God directed him not to entertain such a monocally, monocally suspicion and to go over all the earth without fear of what mischief he might suffer from wild beasts and setting a mark upon him that he might be known, he commanded him to depart. And when Cain had traveled over many countries, he, with his wife, built a city named Nod, which is a place so called, and there he settled his, his abode, where, where also he had children. However, he did not accept of his punishment in order to amend men, but, not, but to increase his wickedness. For he only aimed to procure everything that was for his own bodily pleasure. Mm -hmm. So he only, he basically selfish. He only, he just doing things that's pleasing to him. It's pleasing to him to do this wickedness and to get gained by wickedness. Bring that up, finish reading. Though it obliged him to be injurious to his neighbor, he augmented his household substance with much wealth by plunder and violence. He urged his followers to procure pleasures and spoils by robbery 
and became a great leader of men into wickedness, into, into wicked courses. He also introduced a change in that way of simplicity wherein men lived before and was the author of measures and weights. And whereas they lived innocently and generously while they, while they knew nothing of such arts, he changed the world into cunning craftiness. He first of all set boundaries about the lands. He built a city and fortified it with walls and he compelled his family to come together to it and called that city Enoch after the name of his eldest son Enoch. Mm -hmm. And remember, this isn't the Enoch that we're going into. Not the same one, but let's get a book of Habakkuk chapter uh, 2 because it's nothing new under the sun. So the same way that the, the nations of the world today built the empires upon blood, taking the land through war, uh, just defiling and destroying people to uphold their kingdom. It's the same thing that was going on back then. So that's why we don't really subscribe just to the doctrine of the white man's the devil and stuff that you might see a lot of, you know, Israelites and brothers out there teaching because you know, it was evil going on way back when. Cain was black. Um, who else? Nimrod was black. So evil, you know, is 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 with with all people if they're not right. You know, if they're not taking on the spirit and the laws of the Most High. Let's go to uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse, verse 12. This is the book of Habakkuk. Chapter 2 and verse 12. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. And that's what this world does today. That's what Cain was doing. He was building a city upon iniquity and he wasn't stopping. He was just keeping it going, keeping it going, right? Let's go back. Let's go to, uh, let's get, uh, let's get the book of Enoch. Let's get that. Because in this world, in Satan's empire, you can't rule his world unless you build it upon iniquity. Right? This 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 kingdom, this kingdom is built upon blood. This isn't the kingdom of the most high God because they're not gonna there's not gonna be none of this going on. It's not gonna be just, you know, just violence. All of that will be will be gone. No more bloodshed. Um, let's go to Enoch chapter 22. Let's start out from the top. The book of Enoch chapter 22 and verse 1. And thence I went to another place in the mountain and of hard rock. And there was in it four hollow places, deep and wide and very smooth. How smooth are the hollow places and deep and dark to look at. Then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, Those hollow places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble there. Yea, that all the souls of the children of men should assemble, should assemble here. And these places have been made to receive them until the day of their judgment. So remember, it's spirits awaiting that great judgment day where the whole world is going to be uh, judged by Christ. Uh -huh. And these places have been made to receive them until the day of their judgment and until their appointed period, until the period appointed, until the great judgment comes upon them. I saw the spirit of a dead man making, making soup. And his voice went forth to heaven and made soup. And I asked Raphael the angel who was with me. And I said unto him, The spirit which maketh soup, who is, who is it? Whose voice goeth forth and maketh soup to heaven? And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew. And he makes his suit against him until his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth. And his seed is 
annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Then I asked regarding it and regarding all the hollow places, why is one separated from the other? And he answered me and said unto me, these three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. And such a division has been made make for the spirit of the righteous in which there is the bright spring of water. And such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Here their spirits shall be set apart in this great pain until the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and retribute and retribution retribution like you for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever. And such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit, who make disclosures concerning their destruction. When they were slain in the days of the sinners, such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous but sinners, who were complete in transgression, and of the transgressors they shall be companions. But their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall, nor shall they be raised from thence. Because remember, when Christ comes, he bringing uh, immortality to those that that he's bringing life to, and then the other ones are going to be separated, right? In the reading, verse seventeen. Then I blessed the Lord of glory, and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of righteousness, who ruleth forever. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance we shall fill our houses with spoil. Just like in Habakkuk, building something upon iniquity, building something upon blood. So, you know, the Most High say that, uh, read that verse 7 real quick. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if you have the fear of the Lord, you will know that what you're doing is wrong in the eyes of the Most High. You would... That, that Ruach, that Holy Spirit will be dealing with you, but the more you get away from the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, he's not going to be dwelling with them. Remember, the Ruach don't deal with a, a person that's dealing in sin, right? Let's get that. Go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1. Uh, in the Apocrypha, is 1 and 4. That's the one I want. But still hold what you guys got. It's the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, and verse 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So the conscience, right? The the like it, they, they just, whatever they're doing, they, it's okay to them. You know, just like Cain was doing, you just feeding your spirit that. So that's when you see someone in their countenance just different. You know, they just, it's like, man, you could tell you just been, you just been dealing in a whole lot of evil, right? It's just all over them. I and mean, they just don't, they're not going to feel comfortable with you. That's why, shouldn't this, this should be an easy thing for someone to want to come to and not just here at the FICN. They should be somewhere worshiping the Most High for giving him uh, praise on the Sabbath, right? Uh -huh. But it's like, it's uncomfortable to a lot of people because they're dealing with a whole lot of wickedness. But if you was, if you was playing music, or something that goes against the most high and what he stands for, then that, that would be more comfortable to you. That's how you know that you know you are the world and that you got you got you don't got the righteous spirit upon you. 
because this should be okay to you to clean your life up. And you know, it takes some people time to get there, but it is what it is. Some of us in here was, was like that, right? Taking a while to, to come to the most high. And it's hard for some people to come on in, you know. Uh, let's go back. Let's finish that out. Um, where you Proverbs. at? Con. Picking up at Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 14. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lay privily, that's like it, they lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Mm. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief places of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when you when your fear cometh. Mm -hmm. So the Most High is basically he pulling at people. He he always used other uh, the prophets in Israel and and righteous people all throughout the history. To warn the people, go out there and warn the people, and show them my ways because they plan it for the they they not plan it for the long haul. You know they're not planning it for their soul. A lot of people not really they're not really playing life for the eternal side. They not really playing life. They this they not making a good business decision with their life, right? Like this, your life is like that. It ain't that long, you know. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, that's not long compared to eternity. It's more people that have passed over than us being here. And is you, is you really, really, is you really concerned about where you're going when you, when, you, when you clock out of here, you know? Because the righteous should be more comfortable with death. But the wicked... The wicked, we gonna get that. Go to uh, let's get Proverbs six and sixteen. Let's start at uh sixteen. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter six and verse sixteen. These six things doeth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto you, unto unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. So, shedding innocent blood. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. Mm -hmm. So the most high is against that. Go to uh, 1 John chapter 3. For those notes that uh those Hebrew words there, we're gonna start going into it next week. But if you you know we want to give you that, so if you want to start studying beforehand, you know that's good too. Book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, 
Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteous, like it. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit a sin, for his, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. So you child of the devil be not doing righteousness. <coughs> Neither he that loveth not his brother. Mm -hmm. So you gotta love your brother, right? You can't be in the flesh puffed up about something that's causing you to hate someone, you know, especially without cause. You're supposed to be peaceable to all men, but some people just don't like people they never even met. You don't even know. He ain't did nothing to you. Let's finish reading. Verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the... Like it, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. His own works was evil, so he was hating on his brother because he ain't come correct. Finish reading. Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. And his brother's works was righteous, so he mad. So when you out there, of course, you know, people going to have little stuff to say. Because honestly, you know, the knowledge puff you up. You feeling more confident toward the Most High because you know the law. You're keeping it law, statute, commandment. You fall short, you come back. You a little bit more, you more, you more confident toward the most high versus someone that's not really seeking his knowledge, of course they're going to be mad because they, they know they're not right. They deep down some they spirit, they know they're not right. They know how they moving. They know it's not a, it's, it's a heaven for me. Is it really a heaven for me? You know, if you out here just pushing whatever you pushing. Uh, finish reading. Picking up at verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels for compassion from him, how dwelleth the like how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. See, so in keeping his commandments, you're feeling more confident toward the Most High. Even if even if you're new to the knowledge, you're like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not getting it. Or, oh, if it's taking a little time, just keep staying on that law. I mean... Me personally, I remember first uh, waking up in the truth, and I was like, man, how are people going through that book like that? 
Then you start doing what you're supposed to do, that book start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh -huh. Whereas you're able to go through it, you're able to find stuff, you're able to keep the, uh, the, the knowledge of the Most High, but then when you get away from it, if you start falling off, sinning, not studying, not focused, really, sometimes it could just catch you from ways whether you worried about, you just worried about trying to hustle or your relationship or I got, oh, the kids got this, I got to make that. You better make sure you making some time for the most high. You better make sure, I don't care if you staying up extra late, you better be studying. You better be getting them, them four chapters. You better be getting you some uh, 30 minutes an hour. You got to really, you got to stay on top of it. Making sure you knowing his law, making sure that you correcting yourself when you uh just saying the wrong thing, having the wrong, just constantly working on yourself. And you know, that's hard for some people to do because they'll make excuses. I can't do it, or I mean I'm tired of that. You know, this set apart lifestyle, living holy. It's not it's not an easy walk, you know. But that's why you all here, Con. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 40. Y'all allergened up over there. <laughs> All right, uh, chapter 40, let's go from the top. It's the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Chapter 40 and verse 1. Great travail is created for every man, and in heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. For the day that they go out of their mother's womb to the day that they return to the mother of all things. So great travail for every man, right? Did a woman come from man? So for everyone in this earth, it's a heavy yoke because you're in this flesh, uh-huh. Verse 2, their imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. Verse 3, from him that sitteth on a throne of glory unto him that is humbled in earth and ashes, from him that weareth purple and a crown, unto him that is clothed with a linen frock. So look at it. It's people at the bottom that's scared of death, even to the people that's ruling this world at its highest, highest level. That's why they're trying to get all this stuff done. They can't win this. They know eternal life not coming. They know they sold out through whether it be Freemasonry, uh, Eastern Stars, uh, what else, family, just whatever, secret society organization. They know time is up. Finish reading. Verse 5. Wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness quietness, fear of death, and anger, and strife, and in time of rest upon upon his bed, his night sleep, do change his knowledge. A little or nothing is his rest, and afterward he is in his sleep, as in a day of keeping watch, troubled in the vision of his heart, as if he were escaped out of battle. Shaking up in his bed, right? When, he, when they go to sleep, doing all this evil, they never talk about how what they dreams and what they going through, waking up in a sweat. Uh huh. When all is safe, he awakeneth and marveleth that the fear was nothing. Such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast. And that is sevenfold more upon sinners. So those that are sinning is going through way worse when it comes time for when they just laying down at night and they sleep. They scared of death. They scared of what's to come. They spook. <laughs> keep it, keep it going. Verse 9. Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the, came the flood. And all things that are of the earth shall turn to the earth again, and that which is of the waters doth return into the sea. All bribery and injustice shall be blotted out, but true healing shall endure forever. Mm -hmm. Let's stop it there. Let's go to let's go to First Corinthians chapter six. Let's get that verse. Uh, not the six, but six. 
six, nine, six, eight. First Corinthians chapter six. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter six and verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. In everything that we just read in this one verse, that's everything they pushing. Effeminate. Paint nails. Men paint their nails. Fornicators pushing that lifestyle, idolatry, listening to what a lot of men say and women say on the, uh, on the internet more than what the most high say. Covetousness, making you just think you need something when really you got everything you need. It's okay to want some things, but you got everything you need. It shouldn't be causing you to sin, right? Finish reading. Verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards nor revelers, nor extortioners. And a lot of extortion going on right now. Sign up for my class. Every time you get on the internet, sign up for my class, you get like me. And a lot of times, not saying that all people is doing wickedness with that, but the majority, the people is to come up. They finessing the people, right? Extortion, that's one, just one version of extortion, uh-huh. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. So none of these Shall inherit the kingdom of God if you're standing on that. You gotta repent from that. Go to Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse. Let's start there from the top. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 1. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink, so like with a writer's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brass and altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient, so like it, then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel and thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. See, if people had to fear the Lord, they had some wisdom and know that there was a judge that there's judgment for for uh, shedding blood today if they if they had to fear the Lord. But a lot of people just gonna get a, a rude awakening when it's time when they get up out of here, you know. A lot of people just gonna uh, you know, find out the hard way. 
And so this is why we were in the land of Israel. Our people just have a lot of this up in them. That's why he say no, no uh, murderer shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High God, and to love your brother and on these and uh, the most, the two that hang on all the law, to love the Most High and to love your neighbor, right? Because it start causing you to do so many things when you when you not loving your neighbor, when you choosing to hate them, you choose whether it be coveting because something they got, whatever it is, jealousies and envies that spring up start causing you to go off. Let's finish reading. Verse 10. And as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 24, verse 17. get three more scriptures. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 24 and verse 17. And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. Any man shall be put to death. So that's what you see. A lot of, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of gang banging going on wherever that's at. Ain't nobody surprised when a when a full fledged murderer that's boasting on the internet, you know that's that's what come with it. It's been going on, live by the sword, die by the sword, right? That's what Christ say. It's been going on. So, giving you time to get it right. Whoever it is out there, go to uh first. Let's go to first Chronicles. After the book of Kings. After Second Kings. We're gonna go first Chronicles twenty-two and start at verse five. It's the book of First Chronicles, chapter twenty-two and verse five. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender. And the house that is to be builded for the Lord must be exceeding magnificent, magnificent of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord thy God. But the word of the Lord came, came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. So he shed blood in his sight, but remember, it was not innocent blood when they were going to war against the, the, uh, the rulers of the, the nations that were against the Most High God. So he wasn't just going out shedding innocent blood, but he did when he sent who? Uriel, when he sent Uriel to war, when he sent a man to war because he wanted his wife. And then the Most High did what? He took his son when his son was born. So, but he repented from that. So sometimes the Most High give you time to repent. And a lot of people get some time to repent. Some just, it's not. So you got to take advantage of this grace. But the world thinks grace is just, Oh, now I'm saved because Christ died. I can do what I want. No, the grace is so you could change because you didn't know the law. You didn't know the law, statute, commandments. You didn't know who you were. You didn't know that they taught the world that evil is good and good is evil. They turned every, everything upside down. The most I knew his people would go through that. So now he always left you with this Bible. I mean, what did, what did just some things that I seen this week, a video, a man was walking in the mall and was handing out Bibles with money in it, and no no one wanted the Bible. People, he said, can I give you a Bible? They all said no. Then he gave it to one man. Of course, he was Israel, and he took it and opened it up, and it had money in it. 
And, you know, they taught the world that evil was good. What we see this morning, Mark? We saw a woman <laughs> and her son, and he was driving a Barbie off of the benches. Yeah, and she and he dropped the Barbie. She picked it back up and was like, here, play no here. So it's like you really just sending your daughters to the fire, like you talk about uh, in the Word, right? You just sending them to some sin. So the world has taught that evil is good and good is evil. So that's just what it is and the most high knew we was going to be going through this stuff so we got to make sure that we stay on this path because if you lose patience in this I mean a lot of people lose patience in this family and it's easy to be puffed up and yeah I know I'm Israel or just even us up here right got to make sure you stay focused because man people that you wouldn't even think would just put this work down you know they put it down and you've been given something that there's 7 billion people on this earth. Probably not even 50,000 know what you know. So let's get the last group. Let's go to Revelation 21, verse 8. It's the book of Revelation. Chapter 21 and verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So you got to overcome. You got to overcome. You're not about to, he ain't sending his son to just die on the cross, the first spirit made in the heavens, to die for you, and it's just going to be easy. You know, a lot of people, oh, I just can't do it. Man, look, you better, you better gird your loins like the word say. You better, you better strengthen up. And it, it's, 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 you better strengthen up. In the reading. <laughs> Verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers. And murderers. And whoremongers. Mm -hmm. And sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Which is the second death. Remember that second death? We're talking about the spirits and souls that's awaiting in, in the book of Enoch, the righteous. So you got some, the spirits that's already passed over awaiting judgment day. So keep your eyes on the most high. Keep, uh, go to Ecclesiastes 39 and 1. Keep your eyes on the most high in his ways and you know you're going to make it. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, and verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High, and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients, and be occupied in prophecies. Mm -hmm. You're going to know what's to come. You're not waiting on them to tell you what's to come. they about to crash the money. We know what you're plotting. We know you're trying to get that mark up on us. We know that you you, you bringing forth the great tribulation, and then you're going to say, well, we got some help for you and try to finish us um, up off, try to finish us off. But we're not going for it, right, family? Uh -huh. So uh, with that, we're going to pray out. We're going to pray out. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess afflict thee. 
and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. And I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time, will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth, when I turn 